Hello and welcome to this meeting of the Aaron and her missionaries. I point to the verse that we've adopted as our marching orders. But if uh, Ezekiel 33, 6, but if the Washington see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity or his sin, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Mm -hmm. And we believe that all Christians are called to be watchmen. And uh, we also believe that uh, in order to be the watchman that God wants us to be, we need to learn the entire Bible so that we can see what's going on and how it relates to the day we're living in. That's the only way that we're going to completely identify the danger, right? Where people can see what we're talking about. So we believe that in order to be the watchman that we could warn and that we might see more clearly what's going on in the world instead of putting our head in the sand and saying, I just don't want to hear about it. That all of us are called, my friends, to study the entire Word of God, and that includes Bible prophecy. You can't, listen, you can't run away from it. God has called us all to be watchmen because people's blood will be required of us. In other words, I believe we'll see them at the great white throne and they'll point at us and say, why didn't you tell me? You had the spirit of God in you. Why didn't you study so that you could tell me? Amen. That's what he's talking about. Spurning, Spurning, let me give you an example. Every Christian that I know, including myself, would say tonight that America sure is different than it was. And back when I was a kid, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you got any age on you at all. And we have seen America, uh, America's morality decay at an alarming rate. Mm -hmm. And we would say, many would say in the church and people that we work with and our neighbors and family would say, wow, how has America so quickly fallen into such wickedness? How has this happened? Well, Bible prophecy tells us how this happened. Look at Psalms 9 and verse 17. For the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. And we kick God out of the house. We kick God out of the school. Mm -hmm. huh? We kick God out of the courthouse and the White mm -hmm. House. And then wonder why we have all this hell on the streets. How we have all this hell in our homes, huh? Right. And at the courthouse and the White House and everywhere else, my friends, it's because we have we have not sought after God and we have not we have not chased after him and tried to learn of him, you see. So now we just walk blindly, it seems, as Americans. So many Americans have lost all common sense. <laughs> Amen. 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 Uh, listen, I actually heard a world news anchor say this week, middle schoolers are rising up over the possible banning of TikTok. So what? <laughs> <laughs> so what? When did middle schoolers have a say about anything? Amen. 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 I mean, they don't even know what's best for them much less our national security. That goes back to Isaiah. He, the Bible says that you can tell your nations under judgment when the men have laid down and the women have had to take over and the children are bossing you around. Yeah. Huh? Lord have mercy on America. Mm -hmm. Ch <laughs> now listen, I've got a couple things to say about TikTok. China is using TikTok to steal the hearts and minds of another generation. Mm -hmm. They have observed our secular universities being taken over by people that hate Christ and hate the word of God, uh, these tree-hugging liberals, and now America is reaping the harvest, mm -hmm. reaping the results. You say, well, I'm not used to hearing people talk like that. Well, back when people used to talk like that, back when preachers used to preach like that, People get under conviction and repent, you see. Mm -hmm. We're sugarcoating everything nowadays. Yeah. It's about time somebody just comes on out and says it. Amen? Yeah. Let the chips fall where they may. You know I'm telling you the truth. 
A large percentage of American voters do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, from what I'm seeing in surveys and stuff, it looks, looks like that a lot of people go to church and say they're Christian, but they vote with a political party that believes in killing babies, that believes in uh, homosexualities, and drag queens coming into the elementary schools. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. That's about 50% from what I can see. So, my friends... If you're a born-again, blood-washed child of God, we are up against it right now. Without the Word of God, we have fallen into a ditch. And we have become the blind being led by the blind. Mm -hmm. Because we have been blinded to absolute truth. Yes. We have been convinced in our universities and generation after generation has come forward being taught that there is no such thing as absolute truth. Do what you want to and don't let anybody tell you what to do. And when it comes to China and when it comes to TikTok, you are an absolute nutcase. I mean, you are some french fries short of a Happy Meal if you think that TikTok is not run by China. There ain't nobody that owns anything in China but the Communist Party. Yeah. Nobody. If you believe anything else, you are absolutely, you have gone insane. Christ or China hates America. They'll say it straight up. They don't try to hide it. Even though American dollars has taken them from the third world country in short order and made them a superpower. They desire to be us. They desire to be the world leader. They desire to be a, the superpower of the world. Therefore, they are buying us up with our own money. Mm -hmm. yeah. You are completely delusional if you believe China will not use TikTok or any other thing to influence our presidential election. Now listen, if you were Pin, Pin Ying, Jinping, I know I'm way off, but you know who I'm talking about. Uh-huh. Wouldn't you want to keep Joe Biden in the White House? <laughs> Amen. Half of America hates Christ and hates his word is what I'm saying. How can you vote against his word? And that's what it's come down to, my friends. Black and white. I don't care if I get banned off every social media. I'll stand on a stump up here at the Kroger and preach if I have to. You can't vote along those lines, my friends, against the Word of God and say, I'm a Bible-believing Christian. It don't work like that. Half of America hate Christ and hate His Word bad enough to let them take their country away mm. because of their sinful desires. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. In order for certain prophecies to be fulfilled, America must be taken out of the way. And every great nation like ours that, have, that has crumbled and fallen into dust has crumbled from within. Amen. Amen. That's right. yeah. We are seeing the great falling away mm -hmm. in America today. Yes. And China will play a major role in the last war. You know that from Amen. Bible prophecy if you study. Amen. How do we know we're living in the season of the Lord's return? Jesus Amen. gave us the signs of the times that would indicate his return. Bible prophecy. If you ignore it, then you don't see the season. See, we can't watch from the wall if we don't know the seasons, right? We can point them out and point out how they have accelerated in their intensity and in their frequency. Israel's regathering. And now, because of the attack by, uh, by Hamas from Gaza, Israel has picked up their pace, Brother Doug, and they're regathering even more. And if you study Bible prophecy, you know this is because Satan wants all the Jews in the world to be in Israel because he knows it'll be easier for him to exterminate them all and prove God a liar that he didn't do what he said he was going to do with Israel. That's why he wants to kill them all. Amen. You know this if you study Bible prophecy and you, as a watchman, that's gone. As a watchman on the wall, you can say, look, I see what he's doing. Mm -hmm. You can tell your co-workers, you can tell your neighbors, you can tell your friends, you can tell them in the Sunday school class. 
What is the significance of that to the world and how it relates to the end times? How do we know the Lord's next return will just be in the sky? Bible prophecy. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? How do we know that only the church is going? Bible prophecy. We need to understand, my friends, what, what Bible prophecy predicts and the prophecies that's already been fulfilled and where it fits into the dispensations of time so that we can know where we're at. That's what a watchman's mm -hmm. duty is. Mm -hmm. That's Watchman 101. Amen. 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 How, how can any Christian who studies the Bible believe that Bible prophecy is not relevant to today's church? That's what you hear so many say. So many church leaders say. And I get on the pastors a lot. And I got to thinking about that. And I need to get on Christians a lot. I need to get on the pew setters a lot. Because the reason your pastor will not teach you Bible prophecy in force the way that he needs to because you won't stand for it. Mm -hmm. you won't, you're used to getting spoon fed. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and, and you don't want to work that hard. It might, it might require some homework. It might actually require you popping open a Bible at home sometime. Mm -hmm. right. huh? uh -huh. Amen. Ooh. Amen. Ooh. <laughs> how many, how many, uh, uh, Christians, how could any Christian say that Bible prophecy is not relevant in today's church or to the world? How could any church leader say there is no need to teach Bible prophecy correctly? Teach it correctly, which takes a lot of work and a lot of time. Yes. You see, that's, that's where the rub comes in. I, listen, I want to pull a McDonald's, get my Big Mac and large fry and a Coke less than a minute and be gone and be eating it. It's the same way in the church. Give me a quick little snack. Let me get out of here. I don't want to get into all this deep stuff. You know I'm telling you the truth, you see. this. Listen, what Bible prophecy, now listen closely, needs to be taught in its totality. All of it. Don't be skipping around because you'll just get everybody confused, right? Mm -hmm. Teach it off, which would require for it, and I've been saying this and saying this and saying this, and I'll say it till I die. If I'm the only man alive that's saying it, I know I'm right. This would require an ongoing, an ongoing department in your church. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And you ought to make it mandatory for membership. Mm. And you say, well, I'd lose half the church. Well, God give you another half that's better than the left. That's right. Amen? That's right. That want the deeper things of God. And I'll tell you why in a minute. I told you that we were going to talk about ten reasons why Bible prophecy is relevant and needed to be taught in our churches today. And listen, listen to me, children. Listen to me. Uh, Christian, if you'll learn these, you'll be able to share why Bible prophecy is relevant and needed with your friends, your Sunday school class, your family, and it'll change, listen, it'll change you, and it'll change them, and it'll change your church. I promise you that's true. The church, listen, the church just wants to sit back and enjoy the fluff and to be spoon-fed, and it's time. It's time that the leadership of the church, it's time that Christians say, show me what's really going on, and I'll do the work with you. Amen? we got to all come together in this thing. Look what God says about avoiding study and avoiding spending time in the Word in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My friends, the church will never be destroyed. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. But we are not running. We are not walking. We are not crawling. Well, we, however you want to say it when you're laying prone on your belly and pulling yourself by the arms. That's why 48 to 50% of America are voting against the Word of God, voting against Christ. Because the church is not 
influencing our society. Our society is influencing the church. Yep. Mm-hmm. And my people are destroyed. We are not what we should be for the Lord because of the lack of knowledge. Mm-hmm. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. It's not too hard. It just takes time. It just takes work. It takes revelation of the Holy Spirit working in you as you study. But He wants you to do it. I'll guarantee you He wants you to do it. So many things are coming to my mind to say all at one time. Y'all pray for me. Thou shalt be no priest to me. He said, listen, you're not going to teach people the Word of God because you haven't learned it yourself. Amen. Amen. He's, listen, he said, you ought to get off the milk of the word and you ought to get on the meat of the word so you can be a teacher yourself. That you can be a watchman like I've called you to be. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Mm-hmm. All right. After two weeks, let's finally get into these things. Bible prophecy is relevant and needed to be taught in our churches today because one third of the Bible is prophecy. One third of the Bible is prophetic. Some books have major portions containing prophecy, while others have prophecy laced throughout them or in certain portions of them, while other books are totally prophetic. Mm -hmm. To ignore Bible prophecy is to ignore major portions of Scripture. Amen, preacher. You own it right there. You're telling us right, preacher. I'm going to repent and do right, preacher. Amen? Amen. Common sense tells you it harms the church to neglect one-third of the Bible. This is why much of the church is so anemic. No meat, pastor. No meat. And they're existing on milk and fluff and hoorahs and entertainment. 2 Timothy chapter 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's not on there, Paul. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. All scripture, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. All scripture is inspired of God and profitable that the man of God might be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And tell me that it's not relevant, my friends. One third of the Bible is not relevant. Are we not holding back the precious seed? Huh? Bible prophecy is relevant and needed to be taught in our churches today because one third of the Bible's prophecy. All right, number two. No other book in the world contains fulfilled prophecies. Here's what's going to get good. No other book in the world ever written or ever will be written contains fulfilled prophecies. Mm -hmm. And uh, that includes the sayings of Buddha. That includes the sayings of Confucius. That includes the Koran. That includes the Hindu Vedras. That includes the Book of Mormon. That includes the Watchtower publication. And every other book and every other publication that's ever been written, not one, but the Word of God, the Holy Bible, contains fulfilled Bible prophecies. That's right. Man, if they don't fire you up, your wood is wet. Yeah. You don't went to sleep on the Lord, my friend. The Bible contains, now it's just going to get gooder and gooder and sweeter and sweeter. Listen to me. The Bible contains hundreds of specific prophecies that have already been fulfilled. And you tell me that Christians sitting in the pews don't need to know about this? If they can get a hold of this, they can go home and tell their lost son, their lost daughter, their lost husband. They can tell them what's... Listen, look at here. God said he was going to do this or this was going to happen, and it happened. No other book does that. That will wake them up, Brother Doug. Mm -hmm. If it don't, there's nothing you can do for them. Mm -hmm. If the Holy Spirit won't wake them up with that, they don't want to be woke up. How can we neglect to teach God's people that prophecies have been fulfilled and show them in the Word of God? Mm -hmm. Show them. 
You know what they'll do, preacher? They'll go out and start bragging on the Bible. They'll go to work tomorrow and lay their Bible out and say, Hey, Johnny, come over here and look at this. Mm -hmm. The Bible says this was going to happen. And 200 years later, it happened just like God said it would happen. Mm -hmm. How can that not be good? Yes, preacher. Huh? That's right. Teach them, preacher. Mm -hmm. Teach them, then turn them loose. Mm -hmm. There you go. Amen. These are prophecies that have been fulfilled about cities and towns and nations and empires, political leaders, and even individuals. As well as prophecies, of course, about the Messiah. The first time he came, when he went back, when he's coming again, when he goes back, when he comes down to the earth. And as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and, and run state on this earth for a thousand years, all the way, we have fulfilled prophecies from the first time he came and on the unfulfilled prophecies that we know are sure. Now, concerning fulfilled prophecies, get, get your notes out. Get your notes out because you're going to want to write this down, put a big old star on it, say, I'm going to, I want to give you an example that what people can do when you understand fulfilled Bible prophecies, it would do all of you some good to get a good book by a reliable author that gives you all the prophecies that have been fulfilled. And you start putting it on your family. You start putting it on your Sunday school class. Huh? You start putting it on your co-workers and your neighbors. I mean, get excited about it. You've got the one book that dares to predict the future and has. Many times. All right, let me give you one. You're going to like this. The book of Isaiah prophesied that a man named Cyrus would be the one who would release the children of Israel from Babylonian captivity. Amen? Amen. Look at Isaiah 44, 28. That saith of Cyrus, that's the Lord speaking. God said that of Cyrus. He is my shepherd. And shall perform all my pleasure. Now keep in mind, Cyrus ain't alive. He won't be alive for 142 years or 130 something, however old he was there. All right? And shall perform all my pleasure. Even saying, to, see, no other book does that. And no other false prophet dares to do that because they'd be proven wrong. God dares to do it because he knows the end from the beginning. Amen. 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 So then he says, All my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built. <laughs> and to the temple, Thy foundation shall be laid. Thy foundation shall be laid. That is exactly, that is exactly, see, see how you arm the people? That is exactly what happened 142 years later. Isaiah 1, verses 1 through 3. See, you lay this out before the people, they can take it or they can reject it. But you as a watchman have showed them. Your duty is done. Their blood is off your hands. There is no denying it. Look here. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, there's old Cyrus, mm -hmm. huh? Mm -hmm. That the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. Amen. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia. Hallelujah. I'm about to take a running fit. That he made a <laughs> king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing saying, Thus saith king, or Cyrus, king of Persia, The Lord God of heaven hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth. And he hath charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem which is in Judah. Mm -hmm. Who is there among you of all his people? In other words, you Jewish people, listen up. His God be with you and let him go up to Jerusalem, <laughs> which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God, <laughs> which is in Jerusalem. Amen. Pastor, there's some meat for the children. Amen. Amen. That's some meat right there. Mm -hmm. let, them, let them have it. Let them feed on it. Let them grow in it. 
And you know what they'll do? They'll start repenting of their sin because they'll see the surety of the Word of God and they'll get a burden for lost people. They'll be armed with the truth that the Bible, my friends, Bible prophecy has been fulfilled over and over and over again. Amen. Amen. And we're ignoring it. We're ignoring it. That's a terrible sin mm -hmm. I've come to know. I was guilty of it myself. That's why I'm preaching so hard. Listen, I, I, I'm trying to dig myself out of the hole I put myself in. I don't want you to make the same mistakes. I want the church to wake up. Mm -hmm. Reason number three, the Bible prophecy is relevant today and needs to be properly taught in our churches is because it proves, Bible prophecy proves the Bible is the inspired and fallible eternal word of God. Amen. Amen. Now listen to me. The Bible contains hundreds of fulfilled secular prophecies mm -hmm. concerning cities and world empires. Hundreds. Mm -hmm. Like Babylon falling to the Medes and Persians. Isaiah 3, 17 through 20. Now, if you want this outline, just email me and I'll send it to you. Babylon falling to the Medes and Persians was prophesied in Isaiah 3, 17 and 20, and it happened exactly so. Jeremiah predicted the Babylonian captivity would last 70 years. Jeremiah 25, verse 11 and 12. How long did the Babylonian captivity last? 70 years. It happened exactly so. Daniel prophesied, uh, precisely outlined the Gentile world empires in exact procession. Daniel 2, through verse 7. Study your history. It happened exactly, precisely, just how <coughs> God told Daniel it was going to happen. The destruction of both Judah and Israel was both foretold by Moses in Deuteronomy 28 and 29 and it happened exactly like God gave to Moses. And by the way, if you study why they came under judgment in Deuteronomy 28 and 29 you'll see that America has done everything to the Lord and against God that they done and you'll understand why we're under judgment. In the New Testament, Jesus predicted the complete destruction of Jerusalem 40 years before it actually happened in Luke 21 and verse 6 and it happened exactly like he said it was going to happen and there are many many more prophecies about the future of the world and we can be sure that they'll happen just exactly as God said that it's happened based on the fact that hundreds have already been fulfilled just exactly as God said they would we know that all these prophecies for the future are sure, as sure as the nose on your face. There's no other book, there's no other book like the precious Word of God. It is inspired by God. He spoke it, and men were moved. Holy men of old were moved as God moved them. Amen. It is eternal, Amen. and it is right. It is infallible. How could you think... How could you think that you don't need it? How could you think that you don't need Bible prophecy? How could you think that your people do not need it? Give them the meat. Watch them grow. Watch them grow. They'll grow in knowledge. They'll grow in knowledge. They'll grow in their love for the Lord God Almighty. Amen. They'll grow in love. They'll grow in their love for the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Holy Spirit. And they'll grow in their boldness because they'll see that everything God said has happened and it's going to happen. And their families are in peril and our country is in peril. And the only answer is not found in the White House, but the answer is found in the Lord Jesus Christ and in Him alone. And they'll get bold and the next thing you know, you'll see your son that was lost out on a street corner preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. The fourth reason Bible prophecy is relevant and needs to be taught properly in our churches today is because Bible prophecy authenticates Jesus as being who and what he claimed to be. Amen. He claimed to be God in the flesh. He claimed to be the great I Am. Now listen to me. The Bible has more than 300 prophecies about the first coming of Jesus. Admittedly, some of them are repetitive. But get this. Actually, 
109. Now, guys, get this. See, we need to learn this like the back of our hands. We need to learn this kind of stuff so that we can put it out to our lost husbands and lost wives and lost children, right? Mm -hmm. Lost co-workers. Just throw it at them. They might act like they don't want it. They might act like they're not going to listen. But the seed gets in. Mm -hmm. That's sowing the precious seed, you see. And then let the Holy Spirit take over. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Actually, now there's no way that this could happen on accident. 109 separate and distinct Bible prophecies concerning the coming of the Messiah were fulfilled in Jesus Christ. 109. I'm convinced God has a sense of humor. Right? One, one would be two, but 109 distinct, precise Bible prophecies fulfilled in His first coming. Mm -hmm. Preacher, don't be guilty of holding back precious seed. Every aspect of the life of Jesus as he tabernacled here. And I thought it amazing, Debbie, that you prayed the way you did. It was the Holy Spirit because of what I'm about ready to say. He was working before we ever started tonight. Every aspect of the life of Jesus as he tabernacled here on earth in the flesh was prophesied and fulfilled. Amen. The place of his birth. There ain't no other book, my friends, because there ain't no other Savior. The nature of His birth. No, there ain't no other book and there ain't no other Savior. The quality of His ministry, the purpose of His life, the agony of His death, the glorious, the glory of His resurrection, the power of His ascension, and now the interpretation of His priesthood. Oh, listen, my friends, there ain't no other book like the Word of God. Right. You better be learning it because we'll be judged out of every word of it. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. not the end of the story, as old what's his name used to say. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Paul Harvey. Look at, let's just look at one prophecy. And so I can show you the preciseness of prophecy, Bible prophecy. Psalms 22, 16. For dogs have compassed me. And I believe just by the way that means that he's talking about infidels as the Roman soldiers and non-believers take a passing. And he says, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. That's why I say that about the dog thing. He says, they pierced my hands and my feet. Mm -hmm. That's precise, ain't it? Yep. That's, you, because you need to realize that when this prophecy was made by David, it was a thousand years before the birth of Jesus. And at that time, the only form of capital punishment was stoning. Mm -hmm. They'd never heard of Roman crucifixion. Mm -hmm. So when they read that, they think, what's that mean? Mm -hmm. Why'd they do that? Yeah. You see, all the fulfilled prophecies concerning Jesus alone provide enough validation for any person to be convinced with absolute certainty. See how important it is for our soul winning to learn these things? I mean, load your guns, children. Walk around with some sharp swords. You lay this stuff out there. Listen, they can argue with your theology. They can even argue with your experience. And excuse it away and say it really didn't happen. They're just crazy or nuts or imagining it. But when you lay out the facts that they could study in history and find out it really happened, they cannot deny that. Listen, their conscience won't let them. They might say they do, but God the Holy Spirit will convince them. He'll convince them and they'll have to choose. The Bible is the Word of God. Jesus is who he said he was. And the Bible validates that. Bible <coughs> prophecy validates that. Jesus is indeed is the very Son of God. Bible prophecy is relevant, and we do God's flock great harm by withholding it from them. We all need to know, we all need to know about fulfilled prophecies so that we can use it for his benefit. The fifth reason Bible prophecy is relevant and needs to be taught properly in churches today is Bible prophecy reveals the future. We're going to stop right there tonight. 
because I've come to realize that people's rear ends can't take more than people's brains can absorb. Amen. So we're going to stop right there. But here, here's where I think we ought to call for the invitation, what we all call for. That's for all of us, for all of us to learn. You see, it's easy to hear this mm -hmm. and then turn the TV off or the radio off or phone off or get in our car and go out and eat supper and forget what the verses were, forget what the prophecy was. But we need, listen, here's what I challenge you to do and what we should have been doing for years. We've ignored Bible prophecy and now when we hear these things, we go, wow. But you see, that's what lost people do when they hear it. If we'll get equipped, here's what I challenge you to do. Make yourself a notebook. Find somewhere, find somewhere by a well-known author that you trust, Bible prophecies fulfilled, and pick out the ones that speak to you specifically. Make you a little book. Make you a little book and start like a track, like a track, and just start leaving it around. Bible prophecy that got fulfilled, this really happened. God said this, right? And this is when it happened. Put down the years and just leave it laying around. Just leave them laying around. You want to know the future? God predicted it in the past. You see what I'm saying? Make some tracks mm -hmm. like Denise is doing. Make some tracks. Just leave them laying around your house where they'll have to run into them. Put it on the mirror. Huh? Put it in the lunch. Put it under the cereal bowl. Put it, just put them everywhere. You learn them first, you see. I believe right now that you ought to dedicate yourself to do that. And I believe God will bless you for doing it. Would you do it? Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive us for neglecting your word. So much of it. Because it was hard. And because we didn't understand and didn't know how to understand. But now you've raised up people that have dedicated themselves to study it and to put it in the right place where it all fits perfectly into the dispensation of time. So Lord, help us. Help us to show people Bible prophecy and how it can win souls because it's indisputable. Fulfilled prophecies is indisputable evidence that you are God and that you love us all and that you want us all to be saved through the blood of Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of sin. That's what it all proves. You love us. Help us to get the message out, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, beloved.